Hey, what's going on guys? Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. In today's review, we are going to be taking a look at the Mr. Speakers Ether 2. Uh, this is my first review of a Mr. Speakers product uh, here on the channel. And this headphone has some amazing, amazing properties to it. Uh, some industry leading things about it that I really like. And it also has uh, some flaws that we are going to talk about. Uh, but before we get into today's review, I wanna give a huge shout out to Bloom Audio for sending these out for review. Uh, Bloom is a uh, audio retailer. Uh, the guy that runs it, Andrew, he's a really nice guy. And I will have a link to his site in the description of where you can buy these. And you can also check out his other products because he's a dealer for several other brands. So as always, we are going to get things going here with some basic specs of these headphones. So these are a $2,000 pair of planar magnetic headphones. They use a 71 by 45 millimeter driver. They have an impedance of 16 ohms. But here is the kicker with the Ether 2. These headphones weigh 290 grams, which is incredible, particularly for a planar headphone, which we'll get into uh, in just a second with the comfort. Uh, so that is pretty much the basic specs of the Ether 2 here. And now uh, moving on into the build quality of the Ether 2. These are one of the best built headphones I've ever held. Uh, Mr. Speakers or Dan at Mr. Speakers, he has pretty much a uh, solved headphone build with these headphones. Um, metal rods up here, leather strap that he has cut holes out of for uh, weight savings, and you know, all metal, metal yokes, uh, metal grill, metal grill, uh, leather or suede pads, which we'll get it to in a second. Uh, the Mr. Speakers connector here on the bottom, which is a nice connector that I'll show you when we get to the cable. And that is uh, basically the build and kind of like a spider web pattern here for the grill. And now uh, moving on into the comfort. The Ether 2 is the most comfortable headphone I've ever worn. Uh, and that is due in part to a few things. Primarily the weight, 290 grams for a planar headphone or any headphone for that matter is incredible. To put that in perspective, a Sennheiser uh, HD 600 series headphone is around 260 grams. So these are only marginally heavier, heavier uh, than a uh, 600 series Sennheiser headphone, which is really impressive for a planar headphone of all things because it is, um, you know, it has to have extra magnets for that uh, planar driver. Uh, and that combined with a relative, and they have some clamp to them. They're not as clampy as a Sennheiser, but nice comfy pads. Um, these are the perforated pads, which we'll get into a little bit more when we get into the sound. Uh, and then a nice suspension strap uh, right here. You know, really uh, all comes together to make this pretty much uh, one of the most comfortable headphones, if not the most comfortable headphone uh, that I've ever worn. Now there is no swivel exactly, like there's no swivel, but it has enough flex in the chassis where it can swivel, even though there's no swivel function on the actual, um, like the hinges. Uh, so, you know, high five in with their new headband, they also do not swivel, but this has enough chassis flex where it gives you the swivel back, even though there's no technical axis for it. So that is just really nice. And I really love, love the comfort on the Ether 2. Pretty much top tier build and top tier comfort on uh, this headphone. Uh, and then for included accessories, you do get a nice case here to keep your headphones in. Uh, it's a nice standard hard case. Uh, and then moving on into cables, uh, the Ether 2 comes with Mr. Speaker's new Vivo cable, which is the successor to the Dumb and Dumber cable. Uh, neither of which I particularly liked. Uh, this is definitely the best Mr. Speaker's cable by far. It is a little stiff, but it's mostly, it's pretty flexible. It's definitely flexible enough, uh, paracord braided. 
This one is the balanced one. Uh, I also do have the quarter inch one, but I'm just gonna show the balanced one here because it's the same cable, uh, more or less. At checkout, you will pick your termination. Uh, up top, you will find your uh, little Mr. Speaker connectors, which I really like because they are spring loaded. And they're just kind of a nice locking connector that I really like. Uh, there is an, like a metal Y split with this like a block that is kind of cool. It's a cool Y split. Um, my one complaint about this cable is that um, above the split, like hang on, there we go, right there. The size of the paracord doesn't change. So you do have like a loose um, kind of paracord above the split. And then whatever the strain relief is on these connectors, it sounds like there's like scotch tape underneath it here, which is kind of strange. I'll hold it in front of my microphone so you can hear it a little better. And yeah, it just has this like weird kind of like tape crackling kind of sound. Just doesn't really bother me when I'm wearing them, but uh, it's just something I thought I would notice. So uh, definitely a very, very acceptable stock cable here on the Ether 2. Um, despite their relatively low impedance, these things actually take a decent amount of power. I was taking it up uh, decently far on my THX AAA 789 of uh, around second gain being fed balanced through the RME ADI 2 DAC. So not the easiest headphones in the world to drive, but nothing too, too hard. Any hundred-ish dollar amp should power these just fine. So before we get into sound, we have to talk about pads. Now, when you get an Ether 2, by default, they will come with these leather pads. This is the default pad for the, the Ether 2. And these pads do use a special type of adhesive to glue on uh, to the headphone. And the adhesive is used for weight saving. So this is some special adhesive uh, that they say is worth it for, um, let me see, 70 um, peels and re-sticks. So that should give you some uh, nice time to play around with pad swapping them. So these will be the stock uh, leather pads on the headphone. Um, and then you also have the option of two other alternative pads that I believe are $80 a piece, um, which Bloom did give me to try out. Um, these are the suede pads. And on here right now are the perforated leather pads. So it's basically the same, but there's perforation um, inside the pad right there. So those are your two alternate pads on the Ether 2. Okay, so now going into sound. So I must preface this by saying that I have never been a fan of any Mr. Speaker's headphone uh, really at all. I didn't like uh, any of the Ethers, the Ether Flow, the Flow Close, the 1.1, the non-flows, whatever, you all that. And I'm not a big fan of the Aeons either. I really do not like the the Voce, their electrostatic headphone. But when I heard this at uh, CanJam New York uh, this past year, a couple months ago now, um, this sounded much better than any Mr. Speaker's headphone I had heard, uh, which is why I reached out to Bloom to ask if I could get a review unit of this headphone because I was very interested in seeing uh, if it was better uh, than the other Mr. Speaker's headphones that I was not a fan of. And yes, this is the best headphone that Mr. Speakers makes. However, uh, there are still certainly some problems uh, with the sound on this headphone. So uh, let's get things started off with frequency response as always. Now this is gonna be a little more complicated because there are three different pad choices uh, that are all gonna change the sound. Um, so I'm just going to kind of generalize um, them a little bit more than usual for the frequency response here. And we'll go over what the major differences are between them. So starting off with the bass, the bass really doesn't change too, too much uh, based on uh, what pad you have. The green has the least bass uh, and then both the leathers are more or less the same. But generally speaking, um, this headphone does roll off a bit um, after 100 hertz, has about a 5 dB roll off between uh, 20 and 100 hertz, uh, more or less. It'll vary slightly depending on the pads and your positioning and how good of a seal you get, uh, but not flat bass all the way down to 20 hertz that you would want from a planar, particularly of one of this price point at $2,000. After that, you actually have quite a significant mid bass hump. Um, from about 100 to uh, 1K, 
uh, with the stock pads is a very, very significant uh, mid-bass hump that makes these very warm sounding, uh, which is really strange on a planar headphone. You really don't see a lot of warm uh, planars with humped mid-bass, which is really, really strange for a planar headphone. Uh, the suede's fix that hump a little bit. It pulls it down from uh, about a 3 to 4 dB hump to more or less uh, about 1 or 2. And the perforateds take that down about another 2 dB to get rid of most of the hump uh, starting at around 500 hertz or so. Uh, but it's not dramatically different between all of them. They all are uh, pretty much warm. Um, the suede and the stock pads give you a lot more of that lower mid shot, like that 1 to 2K uh, shout where the perforateds keep that much more in line and flatten that out. Uh, after that, um, at around 3 to 5K, uh, you have a little bit of recession there of about uh, 2 to 3 dB. Uh, that varies slightly between all the pads. And then the uh, 6 to 10K treble uh, varies slightly between all of them. The suede is the darkest sounding one, where the two leathers um, are a little bit similar, more similar to each other. And that is elevated, uh, I don't know, maybe 1 to 3 dB, depending on uh, where you are in that part of the frequency response. So these have a very strange frequency response. Not the best sub-bass extension and warm. Mid-bass hump on a planar is very strange. Uh, and then some recessed mids and, uh, you know, just a little bit of a treble peak, which is not... Uh, too, too uncommon. So very, very odd frequency response uh, with the Ether 2 here. And then uh, as for other things, let's talk about the detail. These headphones have actually pretty decent detail. It's not there for a $2,000 pair of headphones. I can see maybe around a thousand-ish dollars like an LCD 2 or something. I think these can compete in detail with something around like that. Uh, it's behind HD 800 for sure. But I'd say around a thousand ish, maybe a little less, like seven, eight hundred, I think is where uh, these would sit in terms of detail. Definitely not $2,000 uh, worth of detail on the Ether 2 here. Uh, sound stage is uh, nothing too great. It's not the widest sounding headphone in the world, but it's not uh, narrow. I'm just going to mark it as average. Same with imaging, nothing too spectacular. We are also going to mark it as average. Uh, as for timbre, these things are pretty plasticky. Definitely not a very natural timbre on these. Definitely uh, a lot more plasticky. Uh, but the area where these suffer the most is dynamics. These headphones are lacking tremendously in dynamics, which has always been my problem with all Mr. Speaker's headphones. They have just awful, awful dynamics. Now, this is better than... Um, some of the other ones like the Aeons and the Voce is one of the least dynamic headphones I've ever heard. Um, but these are just lacking, lacking in dynamics. Um, I mean, just overall, I mean, for $2,000, holy cow, these are just, just so compressed sounding. I mean, these are, I mean, for those of you that remember my review of like the, the HE 560 and the Sundar, I sound those said those were compressed. This is like, down there with those, if not even more compressed sounding than those. Um, so these are just lack so much in dynamics and you just don't get that good uh, bass impact and rumble with these, uh, which you'll, we'll talk about bass impact and rumble with uh, the next review that's coming up, which you will see what that is very shortly. Um, but yeah, it, it just makes these headphones sound dead. And I think the reason why he tried to hump the mid bass so much uh, was to try to almost fake the dynamics because they don't have the greatest sub bass. Uh, but he just tries to make the mid bass sound louder to give them like seem like they have more slam when they really don't because they're lacking just so much dynamics, particularly in the low end. Um, and then when I was testing these, uh, one of the, the test tracks is um, Why So Serious? Uh, it's Hans Zimmer from uh, The Dark Knight. And there's a part in that song where it just goes quiet and there's just a low, low bass rumble, like 20 hertz, just insanely low bass rumble. And with other planar headphones, like say the HE6 over here, 
you know, you just get this amazing rumble. And these things just die. They don't have any rumble. The drivers start clipping. And it's just like, just, just, just can't do it. And that is not what you want out of a $2,000 pair of headphones, particularly a $2,000 pair of planar headphones. So the dynamics just hurt these so much. And then you have a strange, strange frequency response with these. So as for comparisons, um, things I compared to HD 800 as always, um, my benchmark for a planar headphone, which is the uh, hi fi HE6, which is actually sporting a pair of Mr. Speaker's pads right now. These are the pads off the, uh, the ethers. And I know I said in the review of this that the update would be coming in a week, and I know it's been like at least a month, but uh, I'm working on that, so you can still uh, look forward to that. Uh, but anyway, as for HD 800, way wider stage, better detail, way better dynamics. Uh, still that weird sharp 6K where these are, I want to say these are actually relatively inoffensive sounding, uh, which we'll talk about just a little bit more when we get to the conclusion here. Um, then as compared to the HE6, way more detail. These are just incredibly dynamic, as I mentioned in the review of these. Um, frequency response to these is much more normal, but, you know, insanely hard to drive and needs a bunch of mods and comfort issues and all that. Um, then I also have the LCD4 here and a couple other things, but the LCD4 is way more money than that, so not the most fair comparison. Uh, so yeah, those are just my uh, general uh, comparisons that for the uh, Ether 2 here. So the Ether 2 does some things incredibly well. The comfort and the build are just top notch, top of its class. The build on these is incredible. The comfort is just astounding, but they just have problems. Now, I understand why there are some people out there that like these, and probably people that have um, not tried as many headphones. I understand why people with less experience have the wow factor with these. These are, despite their weird frequency response, very easy to listen to because I think that compression makes them sound like kind of soft and nothing ever gets in your face too much where very detailed headphones like the HE6, like the HD800, can get very intense to listen to because you know, they just kind of push you with all that detail and a lot of dynamics and stuff can get you know really in your face. Where these are very soft with that compression and a relatively, I'd say, inoffensive frequency response for general listening maybe. I don't like the response, but I could see some people liking it because it's kind of a warm uh, kind of response. It's not too sharp, just kind of a warm, soft kind of sound. So I, I see where the draw is with these, but they're just lacking so much in dynamics that just makes them just, uh, just ruins them for me personally. And, you know, details not there for a $2,000 price point. So the Ether 2, I wish I could recommend it, but unfortunately I cannot. It just has too many issues with its sound, which is such a shame because it is a gorgeous headphone with amazing build quality on it. Uh, and I wish it just had a better driver. Oh, and speaking of the driver, um, something I was going to show, and I guess this is part of the build, but we're going to do it here at the end. Look at this driver. You know, that's just a planar driver in there with a carbon fiber plate. And you see that same pattern. It's the same as the, as the grill, that like spiderweb pattern. That is CNC'd or whatever laser cut out of this one sheet of carbon fiber. Like that is not a grill that's added. That's all cut out of the same one piece, which is just amazing. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, just a shame that I feel so betrayed uh, by this headphone here. Just... Great build, great comfort, but too many issues with the sound. Uh, but anyway, guys, once again, big shout out to Bloom Audio for sending these out for review. Uh, links of where to buy these if you do want to buy them or anything else from Bloom in the description, as well as the mini DSP ears graph of all the different pads and all other relevant information down in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.